Hi, I'm Van Overbay, creator of History and Action Games and the designer of the game Sea Rovers. In this video, I'm going to take you through a complete playthrough of the Buccaneers Challenge. That's another solo scenario built into the game, and in it we'll be playing with Robert Searle as captain. So it provides a completely different experience than Blackbeard's Challenge. So first off, I'll show you how the cards are set up, and we'll jump in and start playing. This will be fun, so let's go. Well, we're all set up here to play the Buccaneers Challenge. Now, I'll show you what we've got going on with um, the attacks first. We've got our community attack row up here, and everything we're playing with the 92 cards now that make up the Buccaneer era. So out of the 160, we took all the Golden Age of Pirates stuff out, everything that's black, all the attacks and all the pirates um, and equipment for that, and we've got the Buccaneer stuff in. So we've got our community attack row up here, and we've got B6, B8, B9 and B16 and we can build another pirate ship to go after those and now in this game we're going to be playing with Robert Searle as our captain and he's really cool I'll show you what he looks like all right and now he's got a crew a sloop and four pounders to start off with so we've got a basic crew and then we've got the four pounders and we've got a basic sloop now what we want to do is try to get the Cagway, which is his name vessel, and it's actually one of the cards in the purchase row up here. So I'll show you these, and we'll be off to a good start with what we've got going on up here. Because we've got one attack, uh, one wild card, and that's a pretty powerful one, and we won't have to worry about that since it's in the purchase row. And then we've got the Cagway, and so with it, not only is it two dice, but also uh, with Searle, it gets plus one on the movement. So that's great. And then we've got a brigantine. And that's a cool ship. So that's our purchase row. And then we've got our hand of cards. And we've got some good cards in our hand to start off the game. We've got the HMS Oxford which is Henry Morgan's ship. That's a cool vessel. And we've got William Dampier. That's a great card. We've got Marksman with Muskets. So we could be upgrading to that right off the bat. And then we've also got Pierre Legrand. And that's a cool card because we've got his attack, B8, over here in the community attack row folly of the flagship and so right off the bat we're going to try to complete that with him since we're going to be starting at Port Royal that's the port I chose so we've got with Robert Searle we could either start with the yellow which would be Port Royal or we could have started with the blue which would have been H5 Pettit Goav but I went ahead and started at Port Royal and so now his five attacks we've got B10, which is up the Nicaragua River here. We've got B1, the Sack of St. Augustine, up here in Florida. We've got Terror on Tobago, which is way over here in the corner. And that's a tough one. Now we've got Storm in Santiago, Cuba. And we've got the Plunder of Panama. Uh, Robert Searle participated in that with uh, Henry Morgan. So that's down here at B17. And Searle did a lot of stuff. He was with Mings at Santiago. And so he was pretty prolific uh, when it comes to buccaneering. <laughs> now, um, I've got these set up in order of their strength. So this is a three die, four, five, six, seven. And so, as I said, we're going to be starting out of Port Royal. And my plan, depending on the wind, we need to upgrade his guns. He's got four pounders, and right now he's five dice. So we can really only go after maybe these two weaker attacks right now. Um, if we go after B1, the bonus is great guns. So we can upgrade his guns. So that might be probably what I'm going to do. But let's go ahead and get things going for the setup for turn one. And we'll put Blackbeard's fat last fight track marker on one. We track the 12 turns of the game with that. And we're going to put the hurricane on turn one. 
and we're going to roll two dice for the wind south of the Tropic of Cancer and we get a seven so that's going to be medium winds and we'll roll the die for the direction and they're going to be southwest and now we're going to roll for the wind north of the Tropic of Cancer and we get a six so that's going to be medium winds and we roll the die also so let's see what we get up north and we get west all right now last we're going to roll one die for the hurricane if you get a six it's going to come out and it doesn't all right so now we'll start our turn the first thing we can do we can either buy one of these cards for two pieces of eight we're starting with 12 or we can take the top card of the draw pile or we could either draw a new card for over there at the attacks but i'm going to go ahead and purchase the cagway so that's going to cost us two pieces of eight and it goes into my hand and now i'm going to start um putting some stuff out here and building so let's see we're going to move this sloop over to another space and we're going to put the cagway down and that's going to cost us two or uh, three to bring it out of our hand put it on the table now let's see we'll go ahead and keep these four pounders on it and we're going to put this crew here you can move things around on the table after it's already paid for to be brought out um, and we're going to use the marksman with muskets so we're going to put that there and that's going to cost us two now that's going to give us a re-roll one die that shows a one for uh, from any attack or combat roll so that comes in real handy on some of these stronger attacks that's going to cost us two all right and now we can put Searle back and now he's up to a six die now with a re-roll so that's pretty good now we've got a sloop going here now I want to make sure we've got enough to set sail here in a moment so we've got five left <clears throat> so let's see and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to pull a cool move here if we can get it together. So we've got five. We can bring Pierre Legrand out for two. Now let's see, that sloop's going to cost us two. So that's two. Now I need to hang on to two to move him with. So this last one, let's see, I'm going to put four pounders on there. So that's going to put Pierre Legrand on a sloop. And he's going to be a total of five dice. So let's see. We pay for the guns. Okay, now we're going to set sail with uh, Pierre Legrand. And to do that, we're going to pay the two on the sloop, turn it sideways to show it's at sea. And we pay that two. Now we've spent all of our pieces of eight. But. Now I'm going to use the number two for Legrand there. And he's going to be the silver ship. So he's starting at Port Royal. Now right off the bat, we're going to try to make it to B8, which is just three spaces away. we got southwest winds, but I still think we can make it. And since we paid, that pays for the move. So let's check it out and see what we got here. Now I've also got... William Dampier, which is plus one to any nautical skill. And I'm going to play that when we roll our nautical roll. So let's see. Right off the bat, we know the vessel's base move is five. Now let's check the wind modifier. We've got southwest winds. So we get the wind direction on the outside. And then we're going to put his course direction in that we're going to head east in a sloop with medium winds. So that's going to give us plus two. Great. So no problem. We're going to make it. And we don't even have to roll that nautical skill. So I'll get to save that card. All right. So we're going to move Legrand to B8. And that's the folly of the flagship. This is a pretty famous buccaneer attack. Legrand was one of the first ones. And in 1602, Pierre Legrand, with a crew of only 28 men, captured the flagship and Vice Admiral of Spain's Windward Fleet near Cape 
Tiberian off the southwest coast of Hispaniola. So this is a two die attack and we're going to get three pieces of eight and we can upgrade to a warship if we complete it. So we're going to attempt to complete that. And now we're five dice versus two. All right, so I'm going to roll black always for my buccaneer versus two. All right, so the sixes cancel out and our next highest beats theirs. So we've got that complete. So we're going to get our three pieces of eight. And I'm not going to worry about upgrading to the warship. And we're going to put this on the bottom of the attack pile draw pile and put a new attack out there and it's b7 princessa off puerto rico so all right now what's cool is since that's one of pierre legrand's historic attacks that we just completed and you can see the coordinate on his card the b8 right there then he gets to move again if he can pay for the cost Unfortunately, we don't have any more pieces of eight that we can spend, and I don't have a card that would pay for it. So I wish we could, but that's going to put us stuck there for right now. But that's all right. So let's go ahead and finish this turn up. Now we'll need to discard. So I've got plenty of crew. Got Lawrence to graft. I need to get rid of the Davy Jones locker. This is an instant that negates any instant. And that's a good card in, in a multiplayer game a lot of times. But now in a solitaire game, if it's in your hand, you would have to play it if you tried to play a, a good instant card. So I need to get rid of it. So I'm going to put it on the discard pile. And then we're going to draw back up to eight cards. Two. So we draw four. One. Two three four all right we got some good cards we got the letter of mark which negates any wild card that's a great card to have we got Jean Lafitte which move any vessel again for no cost that's a great card and we got two different havens we got h8 and h4 we got Bennett's key which is h4 and we got Old Providence, which is H8. And now this one for sure is going to come in real handy. So we'll definitely be hanging on to that. All right. So we're back up to eight cards last. We're going to put a new card in the purchase row. And it's La Tigre, which is the graph ship. All right. So that finishes turn one. All right. So we'll get set up here for turn two. We'll go ahead and move turn track marker to two. We're going to move the hurricane to two. And we'll get set up here to roll everything. All right. So we're looking pretty good. Now, first we'll go ahead and roll the winds south. And we get a four, which is light winds west. And the winds south of the Tropic of Cancer uh, predominantly tend to be west. And of course, north, they, they tend to be easterly. So let's roll north. Whoa, another four. So that's going to be light winds east. And now we'll roll for the hurricane. And it's two dice now. Turn two, so a six is going to come out, and it comes out. So we're going to roll one die six, and it comes out on one of these six hexes. It's going to come out on number four, and we roll one die to see which direction it's going to move. And we get that from the chart over here. It's going to be northwest, and we roll one die six to see how many spaces one space northwest so there's the hurricane all right now we're ready to get things going for our buccaneers 
So first we have a choice uh, again to either buy a card or draw a card. So I'm just going to draw one. I don't really need anything we've got going on up there. And we get a brigantine. So that's cool. And I'm going to set some of these out here so we can see them. Then I'm probably going to use this turn. So we got Jean Lafitte and William Dampier. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move with um, Pierre Legrand. And he was over here at B8, so he's going to come to Port Royal. He's only three spaces away, and we got westerly wind, so we know he's going to make it. Our pieces of eight recycle. Now, we do have to pay for the move, so that's going to be two pieces of eight. And we move him to Port Royal. Now, the pieces of eight that was on board his ship come to our supply as unspent. And now he goes away. He goes on the discard pile. So anytime you bring another captain home, other than Searle, now he gets to stay out because he's our he's our main captain. But that got us our some pieces of eight. That's that was the main point of that. So now we need to get going with Searle because um, we got a lot of stuff to do. So let's see. <clears throat> we need to upgrade his guns, and I still haven't gotten any in my hand. So the next attack. It would be good to hit one that we could upgrade his guns. So let's go ahead and head towards. Um, boy, it's a long way. Well, let's go ahead and head up to Florida. So we're going to head west and go around and come up that way. So we're going to be heading west. And now we're in the Cagway. Uh, let's see, we need to set sail. So let's pay three for the Cagway's move. Oh, this is great because he gets a bonus move with that. So we've got three for that. So now the base move is five. And since he's the historic captain, he's going to get the historical vessel bonus, which is one. And now let's check the wind modifier. It's west and west with light. So west and light winds west with a sloop is going to be plus two. Now we can roll his nautical skill. The Searle's got a four. That's the number right there. And we're going to roll versus the wind strength, which is light wind. So we're going versus one die. And I do have William Dampier that we could play, but we'll save him. All right, so we got the nautical skill. So that's a plus one. And that's going to give us a total of nine move points. And we're heading west. So we're going to go one, two, three. Four, five, turn is six, seven, eight, nine. And we're just going to stop there on B4. All right, now we're going to go ahead and play Jean Lafitte, which is move any vessel again for no cost. And that's a great card. You really need to take advantage of this. So, so we're going to play that. And we don't even have to pay for the move, so let's, and this time we're going to be heading northwest. We've got the five, one, so let's check the wind modifier with winds west and us moving northwest. It's still going to be a plus two with light winds. And let's do his nautical skill. And again, that's four versus one. All right, we got that one. So that's going to give us a total of nine again. All right, so let's go one, two turn, three, four, five turn, six, seven, eight. And we'd have to turn, so we'll just use our knot to stay right there.
Okay, so now we've done about all we can do with Searle. But we've still got some pieces of eight left. So, and it's going to do us better to try to draw some cards. So we can go ahead and get rid of Port Royal. So let's change that to, um, I'm going to change it to Bennett's Key for right now. So we'll put it on the discard and pay three to bring Bennett's Key out. And what I'm thinking about with that is after we hit B1, we might go ahead and maybe take the run towards B13, depending on if we get guns or not, and what the wind is. But if we do that, we could stop off at Bennett's Key and drop off the silver and get to move again. So let's see. And we can go ahead and start building another ship here. So let's put a brigantine out, and that's three. Now I'm going to save two to make sure I can I can discard an extra card by paying two. So let's see what else we can spend. Let's put Lawrence de Graff on the brigantine, and he costs two. All right. So now we can discard, and we're going to discard this crew because I really want to hang on to everything else we've got. And we've still got Damp uh, Dampier here, so we'll discard and draw four. All right, now we've got some tough cards here. Now first off we've got Henry Morgan, and that's cool. But we've got Maroon, which plays on any Buccaneer crew at sea, Captain Save versus three dice, a loose crew. So we'll have to deal with that since it's gonna be in our hand next turn. And then we've also got this one, and this is the White Squall. Plays on any vessel at sea, Captain Nautical Save versus four dice, or cannot move for one turn. So we're going to have to deal with both of those. And we got Tortuga. So that's going to finish turn two. So we get everything set here for turn three. We'll move that. And we'll go ahead and roll for our wind south and we get an eight so that's going to be medium winds west and let's roll for our wind north and get a five that's going to be light winds northeast That's not too bad from where we're at. That's good. And now we need to roll for the hurricane. So we're going to roll one die for the direction. A three. So it's going to move west. And it's going to move one space again. It's going to hang out down there. All right. So now let's get our draw. Now, one thing you can do also is you can pay six pieces of eight and completely change out the purchase row. But... I'm not going to do that yet. That's too costly and I don't need to. So I don't really need anything that's up there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a card from the top of the draw pile. And we get Ocracook Haven. So that's cool. But now we need to deal with these wild cards right off the bat. So you have to take care of um, those. So let's see. I do have... The letter of mark which is going to negate one of them so let's see and it's an instant so it can be negated uh even after you attempt it so let's just we'll go about it that route um so we're going to take on maroon first plays on any buccaneer crew at sea captain save versus three dice or lose crew so that's going to be played on searle here And he is our number one. I'm going to change him out to the red one. All right. So he's got four. No, I'm sorry. He's got a captain save of three. That's the skulls. And it's three die or lose crew. So it's three versus three. I don't have anything that's going to add any kind of bonus to this either. don't 
think. Nope. But as I said, I do have the letter of mark, which would negate it, but I'm really probably going to use it for this uh, white squall. All right, hey, we won. We got the five. Their highest is a two, so we won. We do have to pay the three, though. That's one of the downsides of the wild cards. So we have to pay the three, but that goes away. All right, so now we're going to play <coughs> the white squall, and it costs five. And that's Captain Nautical Save versus four dice. And again, he's a four on his nautical skill. So let's see. Now we do have William Dampier, but now he, he only adds one to any nautical skill roll. This is actually a nautical save, so you have to pay attention to the text. There's nautical saves, nautical skill, combat rolls, attack rolls, not too many different kinds, but each one is specific. So he can only be played on a nautical skill, not a nautical save. So this is four versus four. But if we lose, we can negate it. And that's why I got rid of that Davy Jones locker. If he was in my hand and I tried to play this letter of mark, I'd have to play the Davy Jones, which would negate it. So i have been stuck. <laughs> All right. We beat that one. Well, I shorted. I, I missed up. So I'm going to have to re-roll. I actually rolled five for Searle and three for the white squall. I miscounted my die. So I'm just going to re-roll that entirely. Four versus four. All right. Oh, it looks like we barely won that. The sixes, then fives, and then my next highest is a five, and his is a three. All right, so we, so we beat the white squall. But that was a big hit, how much silver that cost us just having to play those. And we've still got our letter of mark, so that's cool. So let's get on the move with Searle here. And we're heading, as I said, to B1. So we're going to be moving northeast. And we're north of the Tropic of Cancer now. So we pick up the winds north. And the winds up there are northeast. Light. So we're going to look, let's see, northeast. And we're moving northeast in a sloop with light winds. It's going to be plus two. And let's check his nautical skill. And that's four versus one. All right, we got that. So that's going to give him nine. Don't think that's quite going to get us there. Let's see. That's one, two, three, four, turn, five, six seven turn or eight but we, we make it i miscounted <laughs> but uh we made it great all right so let's see all right so we're going to attempt to complete b1 now, the only downside is if we do make it i still haven't gotten any guns that we can upgrade him with and that's what i was hoping to have had by the time we got there but let's see so we're going to be six die versus four and we do get a reroll with those uh, marksmen with muskets. Don't have anything else that'll help our us on the attack. So, and now if we want, to, I just want to do this because this is kind of handy. Uh, this is our odds. So if we're six die versus a four die attack, then we've got a sixty-six point one two chance to win on this roll. Six versus four. All right, we got a six and they didn't, so we won. Okay, so that's going to complete B1. And this was the sack of St. Augustine, and it's going to give him three pieces of eight. And unfortunately, I don't have any great guns that we can upgrade with. 
but we'll take our pieces of eight and we'll get to move again now the great thing is is that's one of our five so we'll put that there all right so now from b1 let's go ahead and uh as i said we could head towards h4 mm, man we need well, it, when we stop at a haven, you can upgrade also then. So maybe we still stand a chance to get some guns by the time we get to H4. We got to watch that hurricane though too, because we're going to be heading straight toward. But let's let's do that. So we're going to be heading east. Now we do have to pay for this move. But as I said, this is the, the bonus for completing the attack. That's one of his historic attacks. So this will cost us three. And now let's check our wind. We've got northeast and we're heading east with light wind. So it's going to be plus two. And now let's check his nautical skill. That's going to be four against one. And we got that, so that's going to give him nine. And as I said, we got to watch that hurricane, but let's. We're heading down to H4, so we're just going to cut straight. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, and that moves Searle for the turn. And now these markers. Uh, the ship markers you can turn them over if you have three ships out here and you know which one you've already moved with and stuff so we'll just flip that over now we've got four pieces of eight left so let's see let's go ahead and don't have a lot I can do So we're just going to just go ahead and discard. So let's get um, let's get rid of these two havens, H three and H one. So that's going to pay two to discard an extra card, and we're going to draw back up to uh, eight by drawing three. And we get some cool instants. We get Captain William Kidd. That's a cool card. Reroll one die that shows a one from any captain or nautical save roll. We got Michelle de Gromit. And we got Mermaids, which negates any history card. So in a solo game, this is not a good card, but in a multiplayer, it can be. So that's pretty cool. Whoop. And that finishes turn three. So we'll get everything set here for turn four. So we're going to move our turn marker. And let's roll for our wind down here south. And it's a nine, so that's going to be medium winds northwest. And now let's roll for our winds north, and that's where we're sailing, so we need some good wind here. And we get an eight, so that's going to be medium winds east. That's not bad. There we go. Now let's roll for the hurricane. We're going to roll one for the direction. And four, it's going to move west. Five spaces. All right. Now we get to draw a card and recycle all our, our silver. So 
let's see still wouldn't hurt to see some of those cards and start getting into them um, let's go ahead and pay I'm gonna go ahead and pay to change out the purchase row this turn so that's gonna cost us six and hopefully this won't bite me I think it's the time to do it so let's try it. so we're gonna take all of these put them on the discard pile and put three new cards down there's eight pounders that's great that's some guns I was talking about all right now we get to take one of these cards so we're going to take the eight pounders that worked out great okay of course that might have been the top card of the draw pile but <laughs> all right so let's get things moving here with um Searle. so we're heading to h4 so this time we're going to be sailing southeast and the winds east we get a five and a one and we might just make it because we got medium winds so let's see medium winds east and we're going southeast in a sloop it's going to give us a plus two and if we were in a bigger ship we'd have got a better bonus so let's check that nautical skill we need this let's see how many spaces away we are one two three four five six seven eight nine so we need the nautical skill to make it now i'm going to go ahead and play William Dampier, plus one to any nautical skill. I just kind of want to get it out of my hand, but I do want to make sure we get this one too, though. So we're going to play that, and that's going to give us a five for our nautical skill. Oh, I can't play that without having to play the mermaids. So we'll just go ahead and play that. We'll play William Dampier, and we'll have to ne negate it with the Mermaid, so we're going to lose that. But we're still going to be four against one, uh, two for the nautical skill, so let's hope we get this. This makes the difference. And that's reaching home port out. And we got it. Right on. All right, so that's going to give us a nine. So we make it to Bennett's Key. Now we're going to get our silver. And anytime you bring Searle into a port and he's got silver, he gets to move again. So, but before that, we're going to go ahead and you can upgrade his ship. So we're going to bring the eight pounders out. That's going to cost us two. Oh, we can't put the eight pounders on there. My bad. A sloop can only take four pounders or six pounders. Now, eight pounders are two dice, but six pounders are also, but that's what we need to go on board that so we can't do that so we're going to stay where we're at with the guns so let's see that's all right though we still get to move again so let's see just want to make sure where we're heading and as i said it looks like we're going to head down um we really need to scoot out of the way of that hurricane so we're definitely going to get moving that way. Um, and we're just going to, yeah, we're going to try to head towards B-13. So on this move, we're going to be heading back out of Bennett's Key. So we've got to head northeast. But we still got easterly winds. So that's good. So northeast, we still get the five, the one. So let's check the wind. We've got east winds, and we're heading northeast in the sloop with medium. So that's actually going to give us a plus three. And let's check his nautical skill. And it's four against two again. Oh, we didn't get that one. They got a six, and our highest was a five. So a loss is minus one. So we're going to have a total of eight. So let's see. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. All right. And as long as we stay two spaces away from the hurricane, we're all right. It affects anything within two, and it's going to be moving away from us, so we're okay right there. Now, we do have to pay for that move. So let's see. We had to pay for both of those. So we had to pay our six for the cards. We had to pay three for that first move, and we pay three for that move. All right. Let's see. We can put these eight pounders on board this brigantine with Lawrence de Graff here. So those cost two. And let's see. We've got some powerful cards, but we're really concerned with Searle, so it, we don't really have to worry about them too much. Um, so I'm going to get rid of Morgan and DeGrom by paying the two extra. And we'll draw four cards. All right. So there's our a crew, a brigantine. There's our six pounders. Now, I just need to get them on board, <laughs> and I don't know when our next opportunity is going to be, um, either at a Haven or B-17, and B-17 is the strongest attack out there, so we're going to have to try to get them on board on a Haven, and we got four pounders. All right, so that's going to finish turn four. All right, so we're going to move our turn marker to five, and now in the Kickstarter, this is going to be a stretch goal for that to be a metal Blackbeard figure, and that's going to be awesome. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now let's see. We're going to roll for our winds south. And we're sailing down there now, so. And I made a mistake last turn. I used... When we came down to H4, we crossed over. So that that turn right there, I should have used the south wind. So I'm going to back up and fix it so it doesn't negate this game. And that won't be hard. Um, we'll just back up here. We paid for the move. And now we're going to use the wind down here before we change it. So let's do that real quick. I'm glad I caught that. So let's see, we got northwest winds, and we're heading northeast, so it's actually still going to be pretty good. Probably the same. No, with medium winds, we're actually going to get plus five. So this is even that much better. Okay. So we're going to get five. Base move five. Historical Vessel bonus was one. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep that nautical skill roll, which was a minus one. So that's going to give us a 10. All right. So let's try this again. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Okay. So now we're back up to speed. Now let's roll for our wind south down here. And we get a 10. That's strong winds. Let's hope. They're good because we got to roll the die. Sometimes it's hard to get in and out of B13. You can get in there, but sometimes with the wind, and we're just lucky the hurricane's already out of the way. And they're going to be west. I think that might work out good, especially with strong winds. Okay, so let's roll for our wind north. That's going to be an eight, which is east, medium, same. And let's roll for our hurricane. So one for the direction, and it's going to move west. 
six spaces. All right. Now we do need to refill this from last term. And that's political favor, which is pays any vessel's move cost. That's a good card. So we will probably buy that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But the thing is, is if we were in a warship, that would be worth five because it would pay for the move. Now we're in a sloop that costs three. So it's going to cost me two to buy it. And it's going to be worth three. So I have to think about it. <laughs> All right. But we do need to draw our bite. So let's see. I think we'll go ahead and get it. So we're going to pay two and get that history card. And this is a cool card. Political favor pays any vessel's move cost. And it's Blackbeard shared his booty with Governor Eden of Bathtown in exchange for safe haven and a market to sell his pirated plunder. So we play that. And that's going to pay for Searle's move this turn. So let's see. And now we're heading to B13. And we'll go ahead and start taking care of that. And I'm just double checking our cards, see if we get anything that would help us. We don't. So this is going to be a tough one because B13 is a five die, but we've it's kind of where where the winds took us. So let's go with our vessel's base move of five. Get the historical vessel bonus. Let's check our winds, and let's see. We're moving now from where we're at. We need to make as few turns as possible. So now we can go, I'm gonna head southwest and then cut back. We're gonna go right here and then back down and in. Well, we can't do that because we can't make that last move. We can't move this last space directly into the wind because the wind's west. So let's see. only thing we could do is come down here and try to get close and then hit it and come back out next turn. So let's do that. And I'm still going to be going southwest though, especially with those strong winds. That's going to give us a huge bonus. So let's see what we got. Uh, west winds. And we want southwest and a sloop. With strong winds. It's going to be plus four. Now, if we were in a big three mass ship, it'd probably be plus seven. <laughs> All right. Now, the nautical skill. <clears throat> that's going to be four versus three. For the strong winds. And we got that. So, that's going to give us 11. Now, as I said, I wish we could move, but you, you, at no time during the game can you move directly into the wind. You can do what's called, called a close haul tacking maneuver. So, like, if you were starting your turn and, and for some, you were somewhere on the board, and you, could, you can move one space into the wind, but that's your entire move. So, you can only do that, um, but you can't do it at the end of a, of a move like this. So, let's see what we can get here. We're going to go one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we'd have to turn, so we're right there on 11. And it's kind of, that should be all right to get in now there. So let's see. All right, we've got a lot of silver left. So now I'm not going to try to do a bunch of stuff with other ships because, I mean, it really just would prolong the game. We've got plenty. We really just need to try to get stuff done with Searle. But now by bringing cards out, it can help. Uh, so let's see. 
because I, I need to get some more cards down there. So let's go ahead and bring the warship out. That's going to cost us five. And let's bring, let's save the six pounder. So we're going to bring the four pounders out that cost one. And we'll bring the crew out for one. And we'll go ahead and get ready to discard. Well, for, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and change our haven. So we're going to get rid of Bennett's key. And we're going to put Old Providence down for three. And that's going to be our... That's down here, so that's going to be our next stop at, at a haven. So I want to hang on to the six-pounders. So we'll discard the brigantine, and that'll finish turn five. So let's draw back up to eight. We'll draw three. I'm sorry, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we got some good cards. We got the Jolly Roger. That's great because that's plus one to any attack roll. And we got a three mass ship. We got a Master Mariner crew. We got another Marksman with muskets. And we got Thomas Payne. So, all right, that finishes turn five. We'll get set for turn six. We'll go ahead and move our marker to six. And we'll row for our wind south down here. Now where we're at, we need, we don't need uh, southwest winds because then we couldn't move northeast directly into it. So that's what we don't need. And we get a six. So that's actually medium winds and we have to roll the die. So as I said, we don't want southwest. And we get east, so that's going to work. It's going to work all right. One of the bad things, we got to come right back out the way we came with the winds that way. Okay, so let's roll for our winds north. And we get a seven, so that's going to be medium, and we roll the dial. And that's going to be northeast. Now over the hurricane, it's going to move west, three spaces, two, three, all right. Now um, right off the bat, we're going to pay and move Searle to B13, that's going to cost us three, and we're not even going to check because he's only two spaces away with east winds, so I'm sure you make it. Now let's see what we got here. I'm glad we've got this attack, this history card. That's going to help us. Um, let's look at B13. B13 is going to let us upgrade the crew also. Now we've got marksmen with muskets, but we could, we'll just stay with that. We've got master mariners we could upgrade to, but I'd rather stick with the marksmen. And we've got, so we got the Jolly Roger we can play. And that's plus one to any attack roll. Now, a history card you have to you have to play before you make the attack roll if it's one that's going to add to it. If it was an instant, you could play it after the fact. But a history you have to play before, so we have to decide we want to play that. And I'm going to because we are what are we? We're six die, and the attack's five, so that's going to make us seven. Now the tough one's going to be when we get to Panama. Hopefully we're going to have to do some upgrading or something or get some a good card. That's four, five, six, seven versus five. And now we do get with the marksman with muskets a re-roll on a one on a one. So just that die. So this is seven versus five. All right, big roll. I got two sixes and they got one, so we won. Fantastic. 
So that's going to complete B13, and he's going to get four pieces of eight on board. And as I said, we're just going to leave that crew as it is. Now what we could take the opportunity to do, though, since we've got another one in our hand, um, I'm going to keep it. We could say, okay, we're going to get rid of that crew, put it, and take the bonus crew out, and just switch the same card, and that would just get one out of our hand. But I'm going to keep that one in my hand, because if we lose that one later, we might need that one. So we're going to keep that. Now we do get to move again, because he completed an attack that's one of his historic attacks. We have to pay. It's going to cost us three. And I was, as I was saying, this wind, because it's east, we can't move directly west except one space, that, that maneuver I was telling you. So we're going to have to come back out the same way we came in, which is southwest. And we get a five and a one. So let's see what kind of wind. That's not going to be too good, I don't think. So we're going um, east winds, and we're going southwest, medium. So it's minus two. Let's check his nautical skill. We don't have anything else that'll help us out. And that's going to be four versus two. And we lost that. So that's minus one. So we're going to have three. So let's see. We're going to go one, two, and turn. And that's it. So we're right back where we were before. But that's that's the way it is down there. It's, it's, why, it's one of the things that makes this one tough. That and B10. So we've got to take care of that too. And sometimes that's a tough one. Especially if the hurricane comes in on you. So... So we're done with Searle. Let's see what we got here. We got Thomas Payne, six pounders, some crews, some three masts. Now we can just scrap any of this we want to. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take this, put it on the discard pile, put a three mast out for four. Put a crew for two. I'm going to put Thomas Payne on there for one. And let's see. Now we always have to discard something. So, I'm going to back, back up. I'm going to take Thomas Payne, and he's going to be my discard. And that's going to finish this up. So, we'll draw four. All right, we got the Neptune, which is the Graf's ship. We got Spanish Man of War, which is a wild card we'll have to deal with, but I do have something that'll negate it, so we're still all right. We got the Fire Ship, which evades any vessel or wild card combat. We could use that on that also. And we got the Borden Party, which is gonna help us with an attack. That's great. All right, so that's gonna finish turn six. Now it's turn seven. Now on Blackbeard's last fight tracking, you see that seven's highlighted and it's got, actually got uh, arrows on it. So in a multiplayer game, this is the start player token. And so for the first, first six rounds, turns go around the table this way. And then the last six rounds, it actually reverses direction. So that's the start player token for multiplayer. Now, let's see. We need to fill our purchase row up here. Oh, and it's a broadside. That's a killer card. So, I know we're going to buy that right off the bat. So, let's just do that. So, we're going to spend two to buy that. And we, we really need these cards. I'm glad they're coming out. Okay, we're spending two to buy that. 
Now let's get everything set here. We got to roll our wind. And we get a 10, which is strong. We need something good to get us out of there. Anything kind of westerly would be good. And it's southwest. Not too bad. That'll work. And we've got our north winds. That's a 10 also, so that's going to be strong. And we roll the dial. And they're west. Now let's check our hurricane. And it's going to move northwest. One space. So port roll is getting hit by the hurricane. All right, so we drew our card. So let's, let's get on the move with Searle here. Now, as I said, we do have the Spanish Man War we've got to deal with. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And it plays on any Buccaneer vessel at sea, combat versus six die. And we have to pay for it, so it's going to cost six. Now, uh, Searle is six die, and we've got the reroll. And now we've got the card that'll negate it, but there's still some other wild cards in there that can come out. So I'm going to try and see if we can't knock out the Spanish Man of War on our own first, because we've got the reroll on a one. So that's six versus six. And we lost it. So Searle fires a shot across the bow and then shows his letter of mark. <laughs> and that negates that. So let's see what else we got going here. We could have used the fire ship. Evade any vessel or wild card combat. I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play that. It does the same thing in this situation, since that's a combat wild card. But the letter marks more powerful because it can take out any wild card. So that would be the better play there. All right, so now let's get on the move with Searle. And we're moving northwest. And we got strong winds southwest. So let's see. And that's going to give us a plus three. Now we can check his nautical skill. And that's going to be four versus three. And we lost that. So it's going to be minus one. So he's going to have eight. We've still got a lot of things to do. We've only completed two attacks so far. So we're going to go one, two, three, oh, we can't do that because we can't move, we can't move northeast. Mm. So we're, um, we're stuck right there, especially with uh, those winds. So really the only thing we can do, that's tough. We're just going to have to move right there and wait. I hate that. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Pirate's life. Not easy with the wind. <laughs> Alright, so that's going to, let's pay um, 
got to pay for that move so that was three and let's see let's go ahead and I'm going to pay to put this crew out for two, the marksman with muskets. And then we're going to discard the Neptune. So that's going to leave us five. So we draw three. And we get six pounders, Francis Lionis, and we get the wild card duel. So we uh, plays on any buccaneer captain not at sea. So we don't even have another captain out. So we won't have to worry about that one. All right. Now that finishes turn seven. So let's move to turn eight. It was looking pretty good. But if we don't get out of there this turn, uh, it's going to be looking pretty rough. So let's roll for our wind south. And we get a four, which is west, light. And that'll work for us. We really need a move a bonus card to let us move. So let's put this up here. And that's what we're gonna work on. This that's a good card, Blackbeard's last fight. But so let's roll for the wind north. And we get a five. So that's going to be light winds northeast. Let's see. And let's roll for a hurricane. A two, it's going to move northwest right across Jamaica. Five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And it's over the north coast of Cuba. All right, so let's see what we can do with Searle now. We get to draw a card. So we've got Blackbeard's last fight up there, which is plus one to any captain's save roll. But what I'm wanting to do is go ahead and pay six and change all those out again. We need a move bonus. And there's, I know, at least one card in there still, if not two. I believe there's two and they're both really good. So that's four, five, six, and we're gonna change all those out. And get three new ones. And there's six pounders. Pierre Le Picard and a sloop, so nothing there. So I'm just gonna draw this for my card. And we get Master Mariners again. All right, so let's move with Searle. We don't have anything that will add to his move, but let's go ahead and pay our three. And we're going to be heading northeast. And we've got westerly winds. So let's see. And they're light, so it's going to be plus one. Let's check our nautical skill. It's going to be four versus one. And we lost it. We got a six. So we get six. So we're going to go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whew. All right. Well, at least we're on the move a little bit. <laughs> but we'll get this knocked out pretty quick right now. So let's see. Let's go ahead and play uh, Francois Lionize. He's a captain, so he's going to cost two. Now we're going to play this wild card on him. Plays on any buccaneer captain not at sea. Captain save versus three die or lose captain. That's going to cost us three. 
and he's got three on his captain's save, so it's three versus three. Let's see what <coughs> he can do in a duel here. And he lost. So he goes away. Now we've still got four pieces of eight left. So let's see what else we can do. Now we got two six pounders and a crew. So we're just going to discard the extra card. And with the two, so we'll draw three. And there's Port, uh, New Providence, one, eight pounders, and Sir Christopher Means. All right. So we got another Haven, H2. And that's where we're probably going to try to end if we can make up, make up some ground. Well, no, we won't be up that far. We've already knocked out B1. So... All right, well, that finishes up turn eight. So let's move on to turn nine. Turn nine, and time's running out. We'll move our marker to turn nine. Let's go ahead and roll for our wins south. Uh, we could still squeak out a win. Let's, we need some good win. Now this is a south wind. We get a seven, so that's going to be medium, and we roll the die. Let's see. And we get northwest. That's not bad at all. That's pretty good. So let's roll our north winds. A seven, so it's going to be medium, and roll the die. And southwest. Now let's roll for a hurricane. Four, it's going to move west. Six bases. Two, three, four, five, six. All right. Now let's get moving here. Let's, let's flush that purchase row again. It's going to cost us six. Now we need some good cards here. There's eight pounders, a crew, and another crew. What I'm looking for, there's a couple of history cards that I'm hoping pop up. So we're going to draw the top card. And we get a Haven, Pettit Goav. Now that's actually good. That's, that's where we would end the game at if we can get there. So, but let's get on the move with Searle. So, we're going to spend six, or I'm sorry, three. And we got five for his base. His bonus. Now let's check the wind. We've got northwest, so we can either head west or northwest. And as long as we don't roll the nautical skill, we can we can go ahead and pick which which way we want to take advantage of the winds. So let's check our northwest winds, and let's see if it's going to be better heading west. We'd be plus three, northwest plus two. So we're going to head west plus three. And now we roll our nautical skill. So the nautical skill is kind of how well the captain handles that wind during the journey. So once you roll the nautical skill, you're locked in with that wind direction. And you have to move the first space in that declared course direction. So our nautical skill is going to be four versus two. And we got that. So that's a plus one. So that's going to give us ten. Pretty good move. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. We're still in it. Those are some cool stuff can if things go right. So let's see. Got a bunch of silver left. Let's go ahead and we've got new providence. We don't need that. So let's let's bring Mings out and some eight pounders. That's gonna cost five. And we'll see. We're going to get rid of New Providence. Boy, I still want to upgrade Searle's guns to these six pounders. Or I could put him on a warship. But he gets such a good move, we need to keep him on that. So we're going to have to keep these six pounders. But what we're going to do, we're going to move them out here. We're going to put this on the discard pile. Because even though they're out here, if they're a bonus, we can move them. So that's going to cost us two. And we're going to discard. Captain Save. We're going to pay an extra one and we're going to discard Kid and New Providence. So we're going to draw four cards. The Kid's a pretty good instant card, but I'm going to take the risk that. And see, now, he would have helped on this, but we can negate that. So we're all right. That's the Dutchman. I'll show you him in just a second. Two, three, four. Boy, we're still still not getting those cards I was hoping to get. So we got the Marston Moor. That's Christopher Ming's ship. We got the Buried Treasure. It's a cool history. Roatan, Haven. And we got the Flying Dutchman. Now, he's super cool. Let's see if I can hold him st steady there for you. <laughs> uh, plays on any vessel at sea with two or more pieces of eight aboard nautical save versus four die or lose two pieces of eight and cannot move for one turn so we'll have to deal with him and that's going to finish turn nine so let's get things set for turn ten so we're going to move our marker we need some good wins still I mean, we're still close. There, there's a, a big move coming up. Let's hope we don't run out of time. So that's light winds west. That's okay. If we can make it to uh, our haven, this move. That's, that's going to be the biggie. And we get five for the north. So that's northeast light. And let's roll for the hurricane. See if it cuts up toward the Gulf Coast. Now it's going to keep moving west. Four spaces. One, two, three, four. All right, it's almost off the board. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and flush that purchase row again. That's going to cost us six. So let's put that six. We're almost to the bottom of the deck, so not quite. But if we can get a couple of these, there's one of them. All right. So we're going to take this card, Alexander Selkirk. Now he's great, and that's plus two to any vessel's move. So that's a great card. Plus two dice. Okay. So let's get set up to move here. Now we're trying to make it to H8, and we really need to get there this turn. Um, I don't. I hope I don't have to play it for this move, um, Selkirk that we just got. Um, so let's see how many spaces away we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, we're ten away. So. We know we're going to get five and one. And let's check our wind. We're moving west with west winds. But they're light, so we're only going to get a plus two. 
and now we've got our nautical skill. So that's four versus one. We're going to be, we're going to come up short. Oh, we didn't even get the nautical skill. That's a tie, so that's a zero. All right, so that's going to give us an eight on our move, and that would put us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we've got to go for it. We have to, because uh, there's only two more turns after this one. I hate to, I hate to have to use that card right now, but we're going to have to. We got to deal with the Dutchman too. So let's play play him. He's six. He, he's going to cost us six. And we got to pay. Well, we'll pay for that move in a second. So I'm going to set five out. I'm sorry, three. There. That's going to pay for our move. But let's pay for the Dutchman. So that's going to be um, nautical save versus four die. And we are four die. But now we can uh, negate that. That's why I hung on to that letter of mark. Um, but let's go ahead and take him on with the dice. That's four versus four. Now if I had that Captain Kid card, um, that would let us re-roll a one if we got one. Oh, he crushed us. So we'll use the letter of mark for the Dutchman. All right, he's gone. Now we're going to pay for that move. And we're going to move eight spaces. And we're going to have to play Selkirk. And that's plus two die to any vessel's move. So we're going to get at least two. So that's going to give us our 10. So we are made it to H8. Now we're going to get this silver. Okay, and we can upgrade our vessel. So let's see. We've got the six pounders that can go on the sloop. So we're going to move this over. And let's see. Now that helps him a good bit. So now we're up to seven dice. And since we cashed in silver at the Haven, we do get to move again. So um, we just have to be able to pay for it. Let's see what we got here. We got broadsides and boarding party. So that's going to help us a lot. So from where we're at, we're going to have to pay three to move. Now we can either go... And this is the big move I was telling you about. So, see, we've got B10 or B17. So we can hit either one of those. Um, B10 is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's only seven spaces away. So um, we'll make that for sure. So we've got either B10 or B17. And we can make B17 both. So... B17 seven dice. B10's three dice. The thing about B10, we've got to spend three to move. And we've only got four. So we're gonna only gonna be able to move once. But coming back out of B10 because of those westerly winds, that's what's tough. Um, we could go after B17 and see if we can knock it out. Um, but let's go to B10. Let's go hit it. So we're at B10. And that's a three die attack. And we're seven. And we paid the three to move. So that's seven versus three. All right, so we won that. So that completes B10, Grand Theft at Granada, and that's going to give us three pieces of eight on board. Now we could move again, but he doesn't have enough silver to pay for it. So we're going to be stuck um, not being able to make that other move. And um, that's going to pretty much end the turn. We'll discard. 
discard uh, the buried treasure. We can't make an extra discard, but that's alright. Now we're going to draw three. And we'll put the last card in to the purchase row and that was the other card I was waiting on it was the very last card so let's see what we can do here um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. all right so we're gonna purchase the brethren of the coast that's gonna cost us two and this is cool so this is going to give us plus one die to any Buccaneer Vessels move. Not as good as Selkirk, but it's still a good card. Alright, so let's roll our wind and get everything set here for uh, turn 11. Mm. It's still really close. I mean, I don't think we're going to make it, but... You'd be surprised how much we'll, we'll do in this last, uh, even this turn, if we get some decent wind. So let's see what our, our wind is south. And we need some good wind to get back out of there. Definitely not west. And that's why I went ahead and took it, because I'm hoping it's, it won't be the same, because and we've got the opportunity to get in. And now let's see if we can get back out. So we got medium, and we roll the dime. Oh, and we got west. Okay, so let's get our north winds. All right, we got strong winds northeast up there. We'll, we'll make the most of it and wrap it up here. So let's see. All right, we're ready to move with Searle because we've already taken our draw. And we paid the two, so let's pay the three to move him. And now, as I said, with, with him being... Um, with westerly winds, he can only move one space for the whole turn, but we can use um, the Brethren of the Coast, so we can add to that move. So we're going to move one for the three, and we're going to add one die to it. And let's see. One, two, three, four. So if we get a six, we can make it back to Old Providence with silver and allow us to move again. So it's a big roll. And that's all we got. We don't have anything else to help us on that. So let's see what we get here. Now we get a three. All right, so that's one, two, three. At least he's out of there. But that's going to pretty much about wrap that up. So let's see what we got. Um... I got a bunch of silver. Now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna look at things here, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and call this game because the deck's out, and I don't want to have to put y'all through me reshuffling that. But we've got two more attacks left, and we'd be one turn away. So if we started turn 12, the best he could do, I'll kind of tell you how it would go. We could come up to H8, and we could. Um, cash our, our silver in and we could completely upgrade his ship we could change to a warship which would um, allow us to put 12 pounders on board which we've got in our hand so we could be really strong and we could come in and hit B17 we would get to move again because we did that we would come right back out hit H8 again drop off that silver get to move one more time so from H8 we would have to get to B5 and B5's up here. So So it's it's conceivable that he could make it there. If if we lucked out and had like strong winds northeast or east coming out of New Providence on turn 12, then he could probably make it to B5. But the problem is is he couldn't He's probably not going to be able to make it back out on the same turn 
and get to a haven. And that's what we would have to do to win. Now we did have Pettit Goav, so we could put that haven down and he would just have to get from B5 to that haven. But as I said, with the wind um, and getting in and out of B5, there's only one way in there and that's um, northeast. So for him, you know, it, it might work, but I'm gonna go ahead and call this one because uh, it's, uh, it's too close. Um, and I don't think, like I said, it, I don't think we'll make it. But I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'm gonna count that one as a loss. And I'm gonna go back and look at it too and, make sure, and double check and see if I made any mistakes. I hate uh, that last video on Blackbeard's challenge. Uh, I made a mistake on turn three or I would have beat it. Um, but it's a challenge and uh, the cool thing is it's all historically accurate so with with this game we played with just the buccaneer stuff with blackbeard you saw all the pirate stuff in a multiplayer game you play with all of it and that's that's really cool because each player is making different plans but the great thing too with the solitaire is i mean there's different scenarios that i've planned out also um one with henry morgan so so there's some other cool stuff one with calico jack and maybe charles vane in the pirate era but there's some cool stuff going on. But I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll wrap this up. All right. Well, that was Robert Searle's Buccaneer Challenge, and I'll rack that up as another loss in the loss column. But that was really fun. I hope you all enjoyed it. And be sure and uh, subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting some more videos. I'm going to be doing a multiplayer uh, video showing how that works. I'm going to focus on the components in one, and I'll also do some short ones showing how the hurricane and player versus player combat works. So I really appreciate you tuning in. And again, my name is Van Overbay, and thanks for your interest in Sea Rovers.